Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Adam Smith warned that people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment and diversion, but for the conversation ending in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. That's frickin' Adam Smith who said that. Stacy? Max, for proof of this, we are going to look at an image of men of the same trade getting together for the purposes of merriment and diversion, it would look like from the photo. And this is Barack Obama in February 2011 meeting with Steve Jobs to his left, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook to his right. Then you see the CEO of Twitter, the CEO of Yahoo, across the table is the Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, Larry Ellison, and the president of Stanford University. The Last Supper. The yes. end, it's an undertaker's convention. It's the moment when Barack Obama complicitly got in bed with these guys who run PRISM, essentially. That's the moment. I mean, look at that dinner. Look at that image. This is when Barack Obama essentially took the Constitution and wiped his butt with it. And it's the moment of supreme treasonous action by the President of the United States. America is dead. 1776 to PRISM. Thanks, Barack. You killed the country. This is also known as boundless informant, and in case you have been asleep for the last week, it is, of course, the program in which the likes of Google, the likes of Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, are allowing the government a backdoor. Now, they say they're not voluntarily allowing it in their own personal statements to the media, but here we have a situation of a conspiracy against the public, and, of course, with in that photo, you saw Stanford University, which is very crucial to the whole NSA operation. And in fact, ARPANET, the very first two connections back in the 60s, were between Stanford University and UCLA. Yeah, well, I mean, this is uh, clearly a moment when you've got Stanford University, who benefits from the shareholdings of these companies when they go public. They do the IPO, the initial public offering of companies like Facebook, for example, that was brought into the into the public market at a price that was 50 to 60 percent above any reasonable expectation so here you have the president of the united states barrack uh, used car salesman obama with his arm around mark zuckerberg hyping an ipo and, and this is pretty disgraceful i mean what did what did michelle get in this i mean where did they park their stock where did they where's their insider trading we'll find that out i'm sure well, in fact, one of the whistleblowers involved in this NSA thing, not just not Edward Snowden himself, but I think it was somebody else within the organization, mentioned, in fact, that there is this center at the NSA up in Nevada or whatever, wherever their huge facility is, is that several guys, tech guys from there that concocted many of the schemes, actually then went on to form their own private companies. He didn't say which ones, but he has said that several of those companies have gone public and they themselves are now billionaires. So there is this, you know, this level of conspiracy there. But you know, the other half of the Adam Smith quote was that, but though the law cannot hinder people of the same trade from sometimes assembling together, it ought to do nothing to facilitate such assemblies. So here you have Barack Obama assembling these people together. Here in the UK, you had at Watford, Bilderberg being assembled you know, men of the same trade assembling, whether they're bankers or many of these very same tech giants, by the way. And the government here is facilitating the assembly. Right. I mean, that's the important part of the quote, is that you're not supposed to encourage these monopolists getting together to fix prices, as they do at the Bilderberg meeting or as they do at uh, Barack Obama's uh, meeting of these tech giants to fix prices, to manipulate markets, to fix and manipulate initial public offerings. So it's a totally anti-competitive. And this is why America's competitiveness is dropping like a stone. It's not even in the top 20 anymore in terms of those countries that are the most competitive. And here you have a guy, whistleblower from the PRISM uh, scandal, if you will, who is finding shelter in China. And, you know, if you look at the uh, league table for openness and press freedom, you have countries like Russia are now above the United States. Uh, you know, I mean, America is a short sale. I mean, it, this guy has ruined the country. So let's continue on this theme of people of the same trade conspiring against the public and to raise prices. So, so that you understand better what has happened in the tech space and all this $80 billion surveillance state. By the way, it costs $80 billion a year for the U.S. For, to operate its surveillance state, in, at least in the public 
budget, the stuff that we know about. So let's look at an example in the real world of this trade happening. Miami prostitutes mistake New Jersey mom for rival hooker beat her up. Anna Breguese was enjoying another humdrum stay in Miami at the Five Star W Hotel when out of nowhere, she was beaten by a gang of prostitutes who believed the New Jersey mother in her traditional Jersey attire was another rival prostitute. Well, I, I see the connection. I, I see what you're, where you're going with that. There, there, there's a guilt by association. Well, what I'm saying is that here you have some hookers and they don't want new competition entering the market for access to the billionaire clients at the W Hotel. So they see a new entrant to the market and they beat her up. Now, what is PRISM? What is Boundless Informant? What is the Trans-Pacific Partnership? What are SOPA, PIPA, ACTA? What are these things but these guys conspiring in the room with Barack Obama, where it's Larry Ellison, Google's Eric Schmidt, Yahoo CEO, Twitter CEO, Facebook CEO, Apple CEO. They're conspiring. They're a group of whores getting together and beating the crap out of anybody that tries to enter their market. Right, and it's resulting in competition in America is collapsing in terms of its competitiveness versus other countries because of this behavior, collusion of these tech giants with the complicity of the commander in chief, who we can only imagine is taking a massive kickback. Like Tony Blair before him took massive kickbacks in the UK. He's now out all over the world cutting blood for oil deals as everyone knew he would. And this is the pattern that Obama will fall into. He'll leave the White House and immediately go into this international confab circuit, getting lots of money to lecture people and give talks how to rip people off. The people who are on food stamps, let me tell you something, Barack, a food stamp is not a job. Wherever you come from, I don't know where that is, but if food stamps don't equal a job, you freaking idiot! <laughs> well, even in this case with the Miami prostitutes, even worse, Berghese claims in a federal lawsuit against the W Hotel that the prostitutes were given a getaway vehicle by the luxury hotel. So this is the role of our, the facade of our governments anyway, is the getaway vehicle. They provide the getaway vehicle. And by the way, it's not just these tech giants who are providing this scam, you know, software systems, whether it's for the surveillance state or whether it's for the NHS systems. Also the whole finance sector, you know, the whole banking sector, they're supposed to be, you know, share, you know uh, helping to spread risk and reward. Well, in fact, what they're doing is it's all based on technology. And according to the NSA whistleblower, they can see your ideas form. They know even before for the high frequency traders, they could see you typing your buy order. So that gives them even more of a nanoseconds advantage to other competitors. No, like I've been saying, the technology in the, in the banking space is about front running. In high frequency trading, according to Lloyd Blankfein or Jamie Dimon, adds liquidity to the markets and enhances their ability to make markets. But no, it's, as we know from the prison scandal, this information is used to front run trades, to suck money out of the exchange, to siphon cash out of the exchange. So here's the image of the leader of the free world in a massive pimp suit strutting around with the tech guys, sticking gas, you know, hose in a gas tank, siphoning cash out, <laughs> selling drugs on the side through HSBC money laundering, and then spying on y'all. What a disgusting, degenerate whore bag this guy has become. It's, these guys are nothing, it's a confederacy of whores. And look at George Osborne, the biggest whore in the UK right now. His new scheme is he's gonna give people the opportunity to buy RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland stock, $1,600 or 1,600 pounds worth. Meanwhile, they ripped them off by tens of thousands of pounds per family on savers uh, over the past five years. So here he ripped off 140 billion pounds, according to the Bank of England, by depriving people the savings on their savings account. He's going to give them back, you know, a nickel. It's like, here's George Osborne to the average saver. Cash this pound between your teeth and I'll let you keep it, you little street scum. He's the biggest whore in the UK. But he, at least he's cute. Like, Obama and Eric Holder, they're not cute like George Osborne's cute. I mean, I can see George Osborne in a dress and a lipstick, and he, he could almost, you know, go that way. Well, so to look again back at this conspiracy against the public by men of the same trade, I want to look at this map of PRISM. And this is actually from the boundless informant data provided by, I guess, Booz Allen, now that we know that this guy... Uh, Edward Snowden worked for Booz Allen at the time of the, the, these documents. This is a map of where they're high intensity. So green is they're not actually looking at that much data crossing the internet there. Uh, yellow and orange are more and red is the most. As you see, red is the most is around the oil rich areas. 
But curiously, if you see, uh, China, India, and Germany are high surveillance, as well as the United States. So what is this about? Why, why do they only care not about the places where traditionally you see a lot of um, uh, terrorism? This is what they say it's all about. They're looking at places where their competition is, where innovation happens in Germany, where their uh, manufacturing competition happens in China, where their possible Silicon Valley competitors operate in the United States. So it looks looks to me like they're looking at areas to avoid, like the Miami prostitutes, from any competition entering their high net worth toll booth. It's corporate espionage is what it boils down to. And even with the inside information and the market rigging, their competitiveness is still dropping like a stone, which is what economists call moral hazard. If you don't prosecute bankers for, let's say, uh, laundering money for terrorists or stealing money, they'll just continue to do it. Oh, more and more, and they're not incentivized to compete. And, and even with inside information with PRISM, as you point out, it's corporate espionage. It has nothing to do with terrorism. You have more chance of getting hit in the head with a coconut and dying than dying in a terrorist attack any, anywhere in the world. That's a joke. Uh, and it, you know, quite frankly, the fact that there aren't more attacks like 9-11 is not actually a good thing in America because that's what drives people to innovate is this fear of competition from abroad. If you take that away, people just want food stamps all day and eat donuts. <laughs> I'm American. I don't have to compete. I'm a stupid fat chocolate bite. <laughs> all right, Stacey Herbert, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. All right, stay tuned for the second half. I'll be speaking to the artist taxi driver. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Mark McGowan, also known as the artist taxi driver. Mark, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Max. You have a huge following of people watching your videos. Now, I wanted to talk, get right into this. Um, you know, William Hague, he has said that there's nothing to fear in the UK from these advanced buying technologies like PRISM if you're normal. And um, what's that all about? <laughs> so if you're normal, like, it, it, I mean, I mean, OK, so my primary purpose is I'm an artist. So like a lot of people like I, I make. I make videos, you know, but it's, it's to me, it's art. In all right, let me stop you right there, because one of your stunts that you're involved with right now has got a lot of attention. You're pushing a pig all the way across London with your nose. Uh, this is, of course, to protest or draw attention to what's happening with the NHS, the National Health Service. So tell us about this. OK, so I pushed a pig with my nose from the hospital where I'm receiving treatment for cancer. And I pushed it all the way to number 10 Downing Street, apart from the time when I got on the bus for a little bit because I had to go and meet the guy in number 10. And then I go up there and I hand the pig. Well, I didn't, they wouldn't let me take the pig up there. But, like, it, it's, it's the primary purpose. My primary purpose is art. The government's primary purpose is to move public money into private pockets. And that's what they're doing about the NHS. That's why, that's, that's, that's what, this, this government stinks. I mean, they are rotten to the core. William Hague is a pig. Do you know what I mean? He ain't the only one. David Cameron, George Osborne, the whole lot of them, they are rotten to the core. And, and what they're doing with the NHS is despicable. It's absolutely despicable. And, it, and it's like, it's like, who says anything? The media goes on about things every now and again about the, the anti-nurses. Look at the state of these nurses. What are they doing? They lost a the patient. They lost a the patient. They've got to go on a safari to look for a patient. All right, let me ask you. They ain't talking about the times when no. a nurse was sitting, holding the hand of someone dying. No, but they watch blood. They, they watch you know what I mean? They, they watch because it's a propaganda thing. What they're doing, OK, so the first question's a nutter. Right, uh, uh, am I mad? So people said to me, when Max asks you a question, keep calm, don't swear. Like, normally I swear, I'm trying my hardest, I will not swear. But these people that are in charge, the government they're in charge, PRISM, can you, can you even get your nut around PRISM? That they, that they, that they can go to your emails, they, they can go to the emails of a judge, they can go to the emails of a journalist. That, that is at the heart of democracy, and that's only one little snippet of what these pigs do. All right, that is me, one little slip. Let's focus on the, something you said there, that the NHS and the privatization schemes, basically they're moving money from the public to the private. The government says that the government has no money. They're forcing austerity on the population. 
that they need to do something like privatize the NHS because they, the government, have no money to run it themselves, and yet they, the government, have billions of pounds to bail out corrupt bankers so that they can get their bonuses and that the bonds in these banks remain and the bondholders remain whole. What about this incredible split personality that the government seems to have. They're rich but you when know, they talk you know, to bankers, you know as but well they're poor as I do. when they talk to everyone else. But you know as well as I do, austerity is ideological. Paul Krugman, he was on Newsnight two years ago, and he said, what you're doing right now under the cloak of austerity by moving public services into private pockets is obscene. You, 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 what you, you're, you're, in, you're into finance and things. You, tell, you ask one question, what everyone says to me, when is enough enough for these pigs? They have, they have bankers' bailouts, you've got MPs' expenses. The Queen, a multi-multi-billionaire, gets a five million pound pay rise. She rubber-stamped the welfare reform bill. There are people, right today, changing over the DLA to the PIP, where, where they're going to send Atos, Mr Atos and Pip, down to investigate whether a doctor, a, a, a doctor has said someone is disabled and they cannot work, they're going to send someone round to check on that. While, while, while they give the Queen money, MPs' expenses went up last year by 25% to £89 billion. Do you know, bankers' bailout, taxpayers' support in a region of £2 trillion. Even today, they said RBS, RBS, who, uh, who were given £45 billion, 10 billion they gave to the Republic of Ireland to, a ba to, to bail them out. That's, that's money for our children's education, which they're privatising. That's, that's money for our hospitals. For, that's money for our welfare. They say, when people talk about welfare, and the other thing what the government do is they start pointing the finger because they, they do this transference of evil. They say, look at them over there. Because while this is going on, you've got Britain's got bloody talent on a Saturday night being won with the voice of David Cameron. Can you imagine that? People sitting in their rooms while, 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 while their mother, brother, father loses their job, made unemployed, bailiffs coming round, hospitals privatised, and they vote for that? When William Hague, when William Hague says you have nothing to fear, I'll tell you right now, the people you've got to fear is the public, because the public are absolutely off their nuts, mate. If there are nutters out there, if, if anyone's a nutter, it's the general public. How can they vote for David Cameron? How can they vote for a pig like Boris Johnson? Ter when, when I said I was doing art, Terence McKenna, he said, we are led by the least amongst us, the least noble, the least visionary, the least intelligent. And when, when in the... This is these nutters. And when the, the ones that want to start wars, you've got this IF program right, going is, on. This uh, is Mayor Boris Johnson's office, for those who are un unaware. Mayor Boris Johnson. Yes. But you've got this IF program, right, where, where, where they're trying to say, let's all get together, let's raise some money, and let's feed the world. Who's feeding the world? Glencore, the World Food Bank, Extrata. Who's mining the world? Rio Tinto. Who's causing death and destruction? And when they have Bilderberg meetings, where are we going next? We're going to Iran or we're going to go to Venezuela? Where are we going to get our money next? A cabal. <laughs> and, and when they said, when, they, when, when the audience said, like, what can we do to Terence McKenna? Do you know what he said? Make art. All right, let me jump in. As a, the, an artist, the artist taxi driver, how do you deal with uh, a fact, a situation where William Hague would say that the PRISM scandal and the corporations that are in bed with Barack Obama are not spying on British citizens, and then within two or three hours it comes out he was lying through his teeth that they are spying on British Jesus citizens. Jesus Christ! How do you, as an artist, how do you deal with that? Because it's the parody of their making of, their, of themselves is happening so quickly. It, it's difficult to comment on it because they themselves are, are self parroting themselves. He's completely denied it. He said, he said <laughs> two things. Let me take that question. This is a, let me take that question. One, we are not listening to your phone calls. Two, we do not look at the internet in the US. We look in the foreign. That guy's come out, Edward Snowden. He said they, they, three billion in a 30 day period. He said, 
we look at more stuff on the internet in the US than we do in Russia. And you said it, that the data thing is about surveillance, but it's also about corporations making money. Data is theft and it's money. And that's why they're doing it. They got Lockheed Martin, a, a, an American arms dealers, an arms firm, to run the census in this country. And they say it's going to be all right. Just fill in the form. If you don't, you're going to be nicked. What kind of <laughs> society is that? We live in a society, we live in a society where, where and you know about banking and a financial institution, we live in a society that allows the rich every single day of the week to gamble on whether, whether the poor eat or starve. If that if campaign, if they want to do something, go to the city of London, go to the city of corruption, and you, you start talking to Mr Rio Tinto, you start talking to the African mining companies, you go and start and you talk to that queen, that hairy goat legged, because she's a goat. She's a centaur. She has hooves. And what happens when those bets go bad? You go and yeah, but you go and ask the queen, right? You ask the queen about about her, her investments in mining. Where where now I'm doing this film, this is not a recession, it's a robbery. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Let me set this up so people understand, you know, get the context for this. You went out with the on the web with the campaign and crowdfunded, and the film is called Not a Recession, It's a Robbery. So your, your message as an artist is now resonating out there in the community, and you're actually, you know, leveraged that with the crowdfunding platform. You've now raised a significant amount of money. You're out making a film. So what, what's this film going to be about? Tell us about the film now that you're the, a film the, director. The, the, you have the, got the glasses. This, you should be this, a can next year. This is not a recession. <laughs> it's a robbery. And we know that through ideological austerity. And the main principle of the film is to expose this government as pigs at the trough of public money and watching them move public services into private pockets. I've interviewed people that have been affected by Atos. What is Atos? Atos? Atos is what? Atos is like some sort of like French multinational company that comes around investigating uh, uh, people to find out whether they're disabled or not, asking them, asking them, like, shaming them, making them lift things, making them roll over, making them eat, a, have a biscuit. They say, can, they say, can you stand up? Can you stand up? The guy's in the bloody wheelchair. And he says, what about if someone was holding you? Can you stand up then? Well, He's I'm like, what, if two people were holding me up like that, could I stand up? Say, so, yeah, you're fit to work. People, a woman, double, double transplant, heart and lungs. She was found fit to work in, when she was in a hospital nine days before she died. It's atrocious. The way they say that we ain't got enough money for the poor, we ain't got enough money for the elderly, we ain't got enough money for, for disabled people, but we got enough money for them, the parasitic royals, the MPs, and the bankers. The thing about it is, is they are punishing. And the other thing about the Big Brother's Got Talent, or whatever that is called, the thing about that, the thing about that is this. People, are a, pe people have prejudice close to their heart. And this government's tool, this government's tactic, like lots of governments around the world, that when the election comes and when the build-up to the election comes, rather than thinking about what they're doing, the wars they're starting, the mining, the, 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 the way that they're stealing public money, they focus on prejudice and the agenda of prejudice. Let That's me, why they me, say, look at in. them people over there. Look at their religion, look at their colour, look at them people over there. They're too old, they're too poor. How are we expected to look after them? And that is atrocious behaviour. And that is carried out daily by papers like the Daily Express, the Daily Mail, Sky, BBC, and it's absolutely atrocious. And you know what? The public don't only stand for it, they buy into it. We've got about a minute left. Okay. And we have, recently, the Bilderberg Group was here at, at, yeah, Wa yeah. at uh, Watford, and they had drew 5,000 protesters, led pretty much by Alex Jones, who is a shock jock in America, well-known in America. He then went on, did some media here in the UK. He went on the BBC on Sunday. And, of course, there was, like, a grenade going off and a lot of controversy. And, and uh, what do you we have about 30, 40 seconds left. But the, the way that the troika of, of private interest pushed out the public interest, as you've described it, it ends up with lots of people becoming enraged. And I think Alex Jones is a good example of a guy who expresses that rage. But then when he goes on BBC, there's a, he is mocked to some degree. But 
what is the role of the media here and the BBC in perpetuating this this kind of? Uh... They're, they're everyone, we 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 know that they they're going to do things to their own agenda. And the thing about Alex Neal saying, "Oh, like he was acting" or things like that, everyone acts. Do you know what I mean? Everyone acts the whole time. We can't live in real. Nietzsche said that the real is of no significance to man whatsoever. That we live in a state of continual and perpetual fantasy. We can't hold a thought in our head. The media just plays it. It's just narrative. They've got stories running off all the time. That's how they control people, through fear, through, through, through the media, through propaganda. That's because if people even, if talking about nutters, even if I was to bring people down to a reality, let's say, we're on a planet that is spinning around and around. Can you imagine that? All right, Can you all imagine right. being like, how does the planet hang here? How is this planet just hanging We're in space? We're going to have to leave it on is that. Is it magnets with the sun? We're going to have to cut it off well, there. Well, how's the sun hanging there? We're going to have to cut it off there. The <laughs> artist taxi driver, uh, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Hey, thanks. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I want to thank my guest. Mark McGowan, otherwise known as the artist taxi driver. If you'd like to send us an email, please do so at kaiserreport at rttv.ru. Until next time, Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all. I think it was somebody else within the organization mentioned, in fact, that there is this center at the NSA up in Nevada or whatever, wherever their huge facility is, is that several guys, tech guys from there that concocted many of the schemes actually then went on to form their own private companies. He didn't say which ones, but he has said that several of those companies have gone public and they themselves are now billionaires. So there is this, you know, this level of conspiracy there. But, you know, the other half of the Adam Smith quote was that but though the law cannot hinder people of the same trade from sometimes assembling together, it ought to do nothing to facilitate such assemblies. So here you have Barack Obama assembling these people together. Here in the UK, you had at Watford, Bilderberg being assembled, you know, men of the same trade assembling, whether they're bankers or many of these very same tech giants, by the way. And the government here is facilitating the assembly. Right. I mean, that's the important part of the quote is that you're not supposed to encourage these monopolists getting together to fix prices well, as they do at the Bilderberg meeting or as they do at uh, Barack Obama's uh, meeting of these tech giants to fix prices, to manipulate markets, to fix and manipulate initial public offerings. So it's a totally anti-competitive. And this is why America's competitiveness is dropping like a stone. It's not even in the top 20 anymore in terms of those countries that are the most competitive. And here you have a guy, whistleblower from the PRISM, uh, scandal, if you will, who is finding shelter in China. And, you know, if you look at the uh, league table for openness and press freedom, you have countries like Russia are now above the United States. Uh, you know, I mean, America is a short sale. I mean, it, this guy has ruined the country. So let's continue on this theme of two connections back in the 60s. We're between Stanford University and UCLA. Yeah, well, I mean, this is uh, clearly a moment when you've got Stanford University who benefits from the shareholdings of these companies when they go public. They do the IPO, the initial public offering of companies like Facebook, for example, that was brought into the, into the public market at a price that was 50 to 60 percent above any reasonable expectation. So here you have the President of the United States, Barrick, uh, used car salesman Obama, with his arm around Mark Zuckerberg, hyping in IPO, and this is pretty disgraceful. I mean, what did, what did Michelle get in this? I mean, where did they park their stock? Where did they, where's their insider trading? We'll find that out, I'm sure. Well, in fact, one of the whistleblowers involved in this NSA thing, not just, not Edward Snowden himself, but I think- Welcome to the Kaiser Report, I'm Max Kaiser. Adam Smith warned that people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment and diversion, but for the conversation ending in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. That's frickin' Adam Smith who said that. Stacy, Max, for proof of this, we are going to look at an image of men of the same trade getting together for the purposes of merriment and diversion, it would look like from the photo. And this is Barack Obama in February 2011 meeting with Steve Jobs to his left, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook to his right, 
Then you see the CEO of Twitter, the CEO of Yahoo, across the table is the Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, Larry Ellison, and the president of Stanford University. The Last Supper. The yes. end, it's an undertaker's convention. It's the moment when Barack Obama complicitly got in bed with these guys who run PRISM, essentially. That's the moment. I mean, look at that dinner. Look at that image. This is when Barack Obama essentially took the Constitution and wiped his butt with it. And it's the moment of supreme treasonous action by the President of the United States. America is dead. 1776 to PRISM. Thanks, Barack. You killed a country. This is also known as boundless informant, and in case you have been asleep for the last week, it is, of course, the program in which the likes of Google, the likes of Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, are allowing the government a backdoor. Now, they say they're not voluntarily allowing it in their own personal statements to the media, but here we have a situation of a conspiracy against the public, and, of course, with in that photo, you saw Stanford University, which is very crucial to the whole NSA operation. And in fact, ARPANET, the very first